Moin Moin und herzlich willkommen zur Digital Hello, Learning Journey. and welcome to the Digital Learning Journey. On my left is Michael Zeiser, Creative Director of The Marmalade. Next to me is Christian Fritz, developer of Spike, our high-speed motion control system. And I am Daniel Goodling, also Creative Director at The Marmalade. In our presentation, we would like to give you a brief overview of who The Marmalade is and in which context robotics takes place in our company. Afterwards, Christian Fritz will give you background information about the functions and considerations behind Spike. Our origin lies in post-production, the world of digital effects, and the fine finish of images. Over the last 15 years, The Marmalade has evolved in a way that we not only offer post-production, but start our projects from the very beginning. This means that we conceive and draft our films, then produce them in our studios or on location, and then finish them in our post-production facilities. Our motivation at The Marmalade is to create simply breathtaking imagery. Our clients come to us because they want to showcase their products in the most unique way possible. In our studios in Hamburg, we have created the opportunity to combine both worlds of image creation, to seamlessly merge the real world with the digital one. We sit door to door with 3D artists and compositing artists, and in our studios, we produce live action and special effects shoots. This means that we can wave from project to project and from shot to shot which techniques we use and how we might mix them, depending on what seems to be the most promising result, artistically, as well as technically and economically. For us, this means having as much creative freedom as possible, because working closely with the artists and always having the producer with us helps us to see the big picture, for ourselves and the client. It creates a transparency that has never been there before. The resulting synergies of our production shorten communication channels and ultimately have a positive effect on our costs. Although our customers come from a wide variety of industry sectors, one core business has emerged for us, and that is the glorified portrayal of products. In the ad world, we call it tabletop. We therefore often use slow motion shots or so-called macro shots. There are many examples in the advertising industry. For example, the delightful chocolate wave or the perfect pouring moment in a beer commercial. These shots take us into a world that lies beyond our daily horizon of experience. In other words, we are filming actions that are not visible to the human eye at all, because they are either too small or happen too fast. For us, however, it is essential that we are able to influence these shots creatively. In this way, we can add aesthetic and emotional value to already impressive motion studies. Typically, cameras record films at 25 frames per second. In high-speed shoots, a lot more images are recorded at much higher speeds, for example, 1,000 images per second. But if these 1,000 frames per second are later replayed with the typical 25 frames, the timing of an action is effectively slowed down by a factor of 40. For us, however, this also means if we want to stage a camera movement within the very short time frame, it has to be 40 times faster than the resulting playback. This in turn requires the ability to perform a moving shot that is very, very fast, but yet needs to be very precise. This is simply outside the range of human abilities. That's why we have chosen to make use of industrial robots. With its precision and its speed, an industrial robot is very handy and represents a helpful intersection between the industrial production process and a production day in our studio. But this is where the similarities run out. The software, which is designed for the industrial processes, is not at all suitable for a production day in the studio. Our real innovation is not that we have attached a camera to an industrial robot, but rather that we have developed a dedicated software. A software that is specifically designed for one purpose, the creation of three-dimensional camera movements. The underlying concept of the Spike software is based on how camera and camera movements have been handled for decades. We are not talking about mathematical axes or shaft angles, as it is usual in the world of robots. Instead, we are talking about camera positions and camera movements. 
nach vorne gehen oder ein Bild nach rechts. In other words, the image needs to show a move forward or a move to the right, up or down. Sometimes the camera should pan, tilt or turn around its optical axis. The focal point needs to be adjusted, and the whole translation of this must be done within the software. There should be no inference with a human. We, as creatives, have to concentrate on the process, on the actual creative work. The task of the software is to translate that into technical language. This also applies when you look at entire camera movements. Here, we also go back to established methods, methods from classical animation, for example. Certain very characteristic and significant poses of the camera movement are laid out as keyframes. These are important in and out points of our movement. The software calculates all of the in-between values of the track. The interpolation, given camera poses in space are connected by curves, which we can manipulate to our liking. The time component of a camera movement is determined by other curves, animation curves. Here, the dynamics of the movement can be controlled precisely. Many of the things that have been possible for us in 3D software in the past have now been translated into the real world by the Spike system. At the moment, we're putting a lot of energy into blurring the lines between the real and digital worlds and create a seamless blend between the two. We do this with data exchange. It allows us to send the Spike camera data from the film set directly to our 3D software. We then have direct access to every imaginable camera value with any lens we are shooting with. This enables us to enrich images shot by Spike with digital elements afterward. This connection of Spike and our 3D software also helps us in the pre-visualization process, for example, the preparation of a shoot. We can simulate scenes and plan movements of Spike within the 3D software. This is extremely helpful when working on field sizes and timings within a shot. The development of our software is of course an ongoing process. It never stops. New features and components are constantly being added. A particular focus of ours is to combine more and more elements within our software and to synchronize them. We have dedicated hardware which was developed for this purpose. It allows us to connect external devices, special motors that perform specific rotational or linear movements. An internal system of event triggers control these devices, always at very specific, predefined moments. This all takes place within a fraction of a second. We are also able to connect light sources. All of this is orchestrated within our software and controlled via curves and precisely aligned with each other and can therefore be constantly repeated. The more components that can be included, the more complex effects can be thought up and implemented. This all is only possible within the world of robots and could not be done manually by humans. To demonstrate and illustrate the synchronized interaction of different technical devices, we developed and set up a test scenario. We see an autumn street scene with a puddle on the asphalt. A drop falls into the puddle. A small wave is triggered. Leaves fly through the frame. After that, a foot enters the frame and steps into the puddle with full force. All this looks quite random at first, but it is all precisely coordinated and choreographed. The action of the foot triggers a light barrier. This in turn causes a motor to drop a stone into the puddle. At that very moment, the stone hits the puddle and triggers a wave. The camera starts to move. Fans blow leaves into the frame which themselves are thrown into the airstream by a conveyor belt. All of these devices and effects are triggered and controlled centrally by the Spike software, in addition to the camera movement and the corresponding shift in focus.